So you feel like your yard sucks and no matter what you do every single year, it's the same results over and over and over again. Well, we're going to go through a couple different key solutions that will help that this year so you can help dominate your lawn and really be proud of your results. Thanks for stopping back. It is another episode with Ope. Today, we're going to talk about a thing that most people in general, generally speaking, when we take lawn care and when we take just your everyday human, something that is neglected, something that we feel as people who have taken our lawn game to the next level was the reason it took us to the next level. It was a game changer for us and how we got there. But not only just because the, of what your lawn was doing to get to the next level, but it helped us understand and know why it was taking us to the next level. And we're talking about soil testing. Soil testing is a game changer for anyone who's looking to take their lawn care game from here to the next level, where it's your first home, you want to take it to the next level, you want to practice on your rental property, or you just want to take your game to the next level in general. Soil testing was the light bulb moment for me, not to just have my lawn look better, um, but to physically understand the components of what needs to go into what we call a healthy lawn um, or healthy soil that produces a healthy lawn. So at the basic level, there are so many complex minerals, organic matter, living organisms, gas, water inside of our soil. Um, and, it, and it's so important to understand what our soil is made up of so we can thrive. You know, if you think of us as humans, we put things inside of our body that we know is going to make us thrive and feel the best that it possibly can. When we look into our cars, we put what the best possible products inside of our engines to make sure that the car can last longer. Why wouldn't we have that same methodology when we're talking about soil or when we're talking about our lawns, right? So if you, if you think about it from like a diagnostic, it's the same ideology that a mechanic would have when a check engine light comes on, right? The check engine light comes on because your car is trying to tell you something is wrong, right? And that's very similar to maybe a brown patch of grass, right, in your yard. It doesn't mean it's dead. It just means that there's a lack of nutrients or a surplus of nutrients inside of that one particular spot that needs to be addressed and we have to figure it out. The check engine light is that brown piece of grass. When we bring in our car and ask, hey, the check engine light came on, what's wrong? The mechanic will always, if they do their job right, um, the trustworthy mechanic, I should say, will always run a diagnostic or a series of diagnostics to check the box to identify what the actual problem is to identify what the how, what the solution is to get that problem fixed this is the exact same way in general if we don't go in and and understand what nutrients how much of it you're applying per 1000 square feet the size of your lawn all of those things we're blindly applying nutrients very similar to a mechanic when a check engine light comes on and just guessing what's wrong with the car without actually figuring it out. So what is a soil test? A soil test is, is a way of determining what nutrients are in your soil localized to your specific lawn or yard or area that you're sampling and give you exactly the levels in which each nutrient is, is at and maybe where it needs to be in, in relation to normal levels, low levels, and high levels. This can fluctuate not only from you know space to space within your lawn, but also year to year based upon climate conditions, soil conditions, what you do, what you don't do, um, et cetera. And, and really help drive all of those those levels. The ultimate driver of all of these, all of these levels on these bar graphs that um, you know you would receive on a soil test is really helping driving um, what we call pH levels and cation exchange capacity. Those two things specifically, those are the things that are, are going to even out and maximize the effect for every single nutrient if it's within the range that it should be right so that within itself gets very very scientific i'm not going to go super in depth with that here right now um, but that that's essentially what a soil test is and what it will provide for you now what do we do or how do we obtain uh, a soil test uh, this is actually really easy uh, there, there's a couple different ways that you can that you can do it so 
most popularly you can get a soil probe just like the one listed right here. Um, they're, they're not that expensive. It's a very, very good investment, especially if you're looking to take your lawn game to the next level. Um, what I will tell you, I've been using an apple core for the last like four or five years on mine and it's worked okay. Um, so if you don't have those, that's another great tool. Um, you don't necessarily need the probe to do it. Ideally you want to get four to six inches underneath the soil. Um, so you can have a full, like, understanding of what your soil is looking like from that uh, depth. Those, that's the depth that really matters when, when we're talking about taking a soil or a healthy soil to the next level and really evening it out. Um, you can do it with a shovel. You can do it with like a garden shovel, mix it up. You'll, you'll put it in a bag and send it off to a lab. Um, and there's a couple different ones uh, out there. There's, there's, there's my soil. There's a lot of um, you, you know, different EDU extensions, like local extensions that you can go send these that have different options. Um, Spectric Analytic, Waypoint, um, local universities, they're, they're all over the place, right? So I, I can link a few down below um, just to help guide you. I don't prefer one or the other um, because the audience here is probably most likely never done a soil test and they're looking to take it from the next level. So if you've never done a soil test, any of those options, no matter what they are, will be better than the ones that you've done before, which is nothing. You'll now have an understanding of what that looks like. So what do these soil tests tell us, right? We've dug it in, we've shipped it into the envelope, we've sent it off to the laboratory and the facility, and, and we're waiting to get the results back. The results come back and, well, what do we do with these, right? Um, it, it does effectively what we talked about at the beginning. It'll tell you where these nutrients are in the very beginning uh, from where you're at in, in relation to where, maybe where they should be to even out those pH levels and those CEC levels, okay? So we, we want to firstly understand where we need to get these these nutrients to most testing facilities will provide some guidance whether it's by products or whether it's by specific nutrients of where you can look and what to actually apply this year in your lawn to offset some of those differences I shy away from some of the national providers. Um, I'm not going to name them here, but if you and, and just think about it this way, if you go from a national provider, they're not necessarily local to you. Um, thus, they don't necessarily know, in theory, the soil in which you're sitting on and how to locally manage that. Um, they could take a guess, but from a couple states away or different soil or anything like that, different you know temperatures, all of those things becomes very, very difficult. I'm a huge fan of going to a local extension. Um, they're students, they're seeking degrees, they're seeking information, um, and they're seeking people to test that knowledge on. Um, they will openly welcome a conversation. Most of them have courses, though maybe a little bit expensive. Um, but with that, you can go and ask, have a phone conversation with nearly anybody at an EDU extension, um, and they'll be willing to help you out and provide some guidance from a local level. So this is the part where I got super confused because it involved biology, it involved science, and I was not good at that. The way it helped me learn was learning from a couple different lawn care nuts like myself and then hearing it from different angles and then it just kind of clicked. When we go and look at, you know, a couple different, uh, you know, tests, right? You, you, on one end of the scale, um, it's going to be acidic. On the other, on the other uh, side of the scale, it's going to be alkaline. Um, and, and we really want to make sure that we can make these nutrients as neutral as possible. Um, and when we talk pH, right, because that's the thing that we want to help neutralize. The sweet spot for most lawns, and I'm, and I'm saying most because there's different areas and different things, um, is 6.2 to like 7. It's a very small window, it seems like. But it can drastically change the lower you get or the higher you get towards those two, two numbers. Um, most of the macros that I mentioned earlier like being in that mid range for the proper uh, nutrient uptake. Right. And, and like, so when we're in the middle, right. And some, some prefer very strong, some prefer more on the acidic side. It, it just kind of depends on that. Um, but all in, when you're looking at the pH levels, um, it, it, it really should be around that 6.2 to 7. And that's what we're trying to, trying to effectively get. Then it's all about applying the right products. So when we go in and, and understand this, this is going to be different for everybody. I'm not going to sit here and say, you need to apply more nitrogen. You need to apply malorganite. You need to apply a, a straight potassium product. 
This is going to be dependent on everybody's lawn individually. And that's why generic programs don't necessarily see the results that they, you know, might advertise that they do. They will work. They just might not work on everybody's lawn. And that's why some people see results for specific companies and those types of things. And they keep going back to them because it works and that's totally fine. But again, we're here and we're sitting through here because we haven't seen success and we're doing the same thing repetitively over and over again. And we just want to take it to the next level and really just beat out that phase. Soil testing should not be completed if you have applied fertilizer within the past 60 days minimum. If you're within inside of 60 days of an application, do not perform a soil test. It will completely bring back inaccurate results, false readings based upon what you had just applied, which makes sense. If you apply a nutrient um, or a, a, a product with a nutrient in it, that nutrient is going to show higher levels because you just applied that um, than what is reality inside of your soil. So we need to really make sure to do that. So when is the best time to do that? Um, right away at the spring. Um, or if you happen to have waited inside of any sort of period, um, inside of the season, 60 days worth of time, that is also a good place to do it. So right away in the springtime for cool season lawns is, is generally a good spot to do it. Um, and kind of go from there. The other thing I'm going to mention is the results take time to get right. It's a, it's a ship something away. A laboratory assesses it and then send you the results back, uh, primarily electronically. So that's, that's some good time there, but it takes time, right? It, it takes about a week or two to get your results from, you know, taking the sample, shipping it, getting the results back, etc. So plan ahead with this. Um, I cannot stress that enough. We'll, we'll certainly talk through that today, but plan ahead. So in review, we need to do a few things. We need to firstly order the soil sample right? Or, or order the actual test. And you can do that. I've listed a couple in the link below. You can go check that out. Um, secondly, we need to perform the soil test. So that means we need to get the tool. So it's either going to be a soil probe, um, a garden shovel, uh, an, an apple core, like I've been using for the past couple of years, but something that will get you four to six inches in depth to the, to the, um, in, in your lawn inside of the soil that we can kind of mix together in a baggie and then ship it off, um, to the, the lab. Thirdly is we wait, we, we wait to get those results. Generally, it's going to be about a couple weeks worth of a wait is, is generally what you can expect. So definitely, um, try to do this uh, ahead of time and plan ahead. Uh, lastly, we, we want to understand what the results mean, and then that will direct us in the way to get some product. Right. Um, and like I said, most of those uh, you know, soil test companies have the products listed, um, because either they have products or they have a partnership with products. Um, not saying that that's going to work best for you, but those are out there and that works great for a lot of people. Um, but the other one is just looking for the specific numbers within that soil test of what you're going to need for each nutrient to then go apply on your lawn. And lastly, that one reminder is do not perform a soil test within 60 days of when you applied any sort of fertilizer um, that will jack up your entire soil test and give you inaccurate readings because it will flow into what you just put in. It will, it will accentuate what you just put down uh, within your, within your soil, which makes perfect sense. You put down more soil and it has more nitrogen than what you have in it. Your test is likely going to read that it has more nitrogen. Um, so just be very, very wary of that. Otherwise, once you've understood this, then you're ready to take it into the next step and physically understanding what these levels mean, how to really go about them in future years and take it to the next level, um, in which we will certainly cover, but we're not going to cover it any deeper in this video. That's going to be a whole different segment. Um, and once we get in there, so, uh, click that like button, share this video with someone who needs it and click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then drop a comment inside uh, the comment box of what your plan is. Or if you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer those as well. Um, and like I said, we're just here to get your yard to not suck anymore. And, and you can actually start seeing results and taking your steps to the next level. So with that, we will see you in the next episode. We'll see you soon.